Hi everyone, I'm John Paul from InMotion Hosting and today I'm going to show you WordPress troubleshooting techniques. I also want to say a big thank you to WP Campus for putting this online conference together. I spent some time in tech support for InMotion Hosting and I want to share some of the common steps you can use to narrow down the cause of WordPress website problems. These are the topics we'll be covering today. How to back up your site, changing WordPress passwords, enabling WordPress debugging, testing plugins, testing themes, troubleshooting email issues, optimizing your site, troubleshooting database errors, 404 errors, redirect problems and URL issues, and exhausted memory or memory limit errors. You can also click the link in the slide to jump to that specific topic. So before we jump in and start messing with anything, the first thing we need to do is back up the site. This is to ensure we can revert the changes back if something goes wrong, and it's also a best practice for your website. How do you back up your site? There's several ways. One of the easiest ways is to use a backup plugin. Some examples of these are All-in-One WP Migration, Updraft Plus, and Total Upkeep. These allow you to schedule and perform backups right from your dashboard. Here I am performing a backup of the files and database using total upkeep. You can also back up your site using a hosting tool such as cPanel, or Softaculous. These are especially good options if you don't have dashboard access. Another option is a manual backup. You can do this by downloading your site files using FTP or a file manager. In this example, I'm using FileZilla to download the WordPress files using FTP. but I would recommend compressing or zipping the files first. Then you will have to download a copy of your database as well. This can be done through command line or a hosting tool such as PHP MyAdmin, which is what I'm doing here. Your web host may also provide another backup service such as remote backups. They'll typically have a tool where you can create and manage the backups from an interface. Now let's go ahead and get started with WordPress passwords. Since this is such a common issue that we see. The main solution to password and often login issues is to change the password. Email is the easiest way since you can just click the lost your password link from your WordPress login screen.
If you can't remember the username or email address, you can look it up in the database. It's in the WP underscore users table. You can change the password directly in the database, but be sure to use MD5 hashing. You can also update the email address in the database if you want to send the password reset email to a different address. If you prefer to reset your password with FTP, you can use a WP underscore set underscore password function to change the password. This is a little more advanced for me to show in a quick video, but that and everything we just discussed is covered in the helpful links guide on how to reset your WordPress admin password. A lot of times there's errors occurring, but they're being suppressed or hidden. Enabling debugging allows them to display on the page or be logged to a file. But be careful when testing this, since it may expose information about your site. You may want to test on a clone of a site or at a time when traffic is low if you must test on a live site. To enable WordPress debugging, just edit your wp-config.php file. It should be on the document root of your site. Then add these three lines and save it. The first line will cause WordPress to display any errors from PHP functions that are built into WordPress. The second line will display any errors for WordPress's built-in JavaScript and CSS. And the third line will save errors to a debug.log file in the WP content folder. Here I am enabling debugging with the cPanel file manager. In this example, there's a line of code for debugging already there. I'm just going to erase it. Note, there are also plugins available for enabling debugging. Remember that your web host most likely has error logs that you can review as well, such as a cPanel error log, MySQL error log, or Nginx error log. These may also provide additional evidence and clues into the cause of your issue. Once you have an actual error message, you can start researching or troubleshooting it. You can also provide it to your host so they can understand the scope of your issue. Here I am checking the error logs in cPanel. A very common cause of problems is plugins. Maybe two similar plugins don't get along or maybe one hasn't been updated in years and is not compatible with the latest WordPress 5.8 update. Keep in mind that a wide range of problems can be caused by plugin and theme issues. Since they're created by different third-party developers, there can be compatibility issues. Some developers may not update their plugin or theme often or at all. This can cause them to deprecate over time as WordPress updates are released, since they may no longer be compatible with new feature releases or coding changes. The first thing I usually check is that the plugins are up to date. If you're still having problems, you can try disabling the plugins one by one 
then retesting the problem. Keep in mind that this can take quite some time and you need to be able to log into the dashboard. Another way is to access the plugins folder and rename it. This will disable all plugins immediately. You can also open the plugins folder and rename the individual plugin folders one by one. Next we'll show you how to test themes. This can quickly rule them out as the cause of your issues. Once again, the first thing I usually check is that the themes are up to date. Next, I'll change to a default theme such as 2021 or 2020. If you don't have dashboard access, you can open the WP-Content folder, then the Themes folder, and rename your current theme. This should cause your WordPress site to revert to a default theme. Alright, now we're going to talk about troubleshooting email issues. If you're missing emails from your forms or admin alerts are not coming through, there's a couple of things you can check. First, check the admin email address you have set in your dashboard so you can make sure that you're checking the right email address. You can also check your server's mail log. Typically, we would check the Exum mail log via SSH and grep for the admin email address. You can also use a mail logging plugin for WordPress. This would allow you to check the mail log directly in the dashboard. Another test you can do is install an SMTP plugin. I recommend testing the email settings by checking your email with them first. A common question I got in tech support was, why is my site slow? But first, let's discuss why a slow site is bad. Overall, it's a bad user experience, but typically if a site takes too long to load, the visitor will bounce or leave. They may also get the impression that your site is not optimized and is possibly less secure. If this was an e-commerce site, the potential customer may never return. Some things that can slow down your site are lack of caching, slow scripts loading, large images, outdated plugins, outdated themes, a hack, attack, or DDoS, routing issues such as a network outage, large sudden influxes of traffic, or a hosting environment that is not optimized for WordPress sites. We're going to go over some site optimization best practices. Caching will often solve a lot of site problems. If your host or servers include caching, you can often just use a plugin to manage it. Moving slow scripts down to the bottom of a page can allow the essential items to load first and the scripts to load after. This can often include ads or tracking tools. Optimizing images means making them no larger than is necessary. 
For example, if an image is displaying in a small box on your site, it should be minimized to the specific size needed. Instead of using a massive 10 megabyte file that will take a long time for the visitor to load. There are plugins available to help you do this. If your site's going slow, you can test the plugins and themes as we discussed earlier as well. This will rule them out as the cause of a slow site. Securing your site can also help with performance in some cases. You can click the link in the slideshow to learn more about security best practices. If you're having routing issues, reach out to your host or ISP to resolve them. You can provide a ping and trace route as evidence. Using a CDN or servers that are closer to most of your visitors can also help optimize your site. Cloudflare, for example, is a popular CDN service. You may also want to consider upgrading your hosting plan or getting a WordPress optimized hosting plan. You can get this from InMotion Hosting. This ensures the server environment has been customized to serve WordPress sites up quickly. Database errors can be a little tricky, but there's two main issues that we see often. The first one is error establishing a database connection. You should check your database settings in the wp-config.php file. Does the database user have permission to access the database? As a test, you can try creating a new user giving them permission to access the database then updating this user in the wp-config file Also, is the host name correct? If your database is on the same server as your site files, it will typically be localhost. If your database is hosted on a different server, you should use a host name that resolves to the database server. This is typically a domain name such as example.com or IP address. You can also add a port to this setting if necessary. Another database issue we see is corrupted databases. You can usually check and repair them with WPCLI using the WPDB repair command.
If you have a hosting tool such as cPanel, you can check and repair them there with the included tool. All right, if you're getting 404 errors, redirect problems, or URL issues, there's a few things we can check. The first thing I would try is resetting permalinks. This will add the default rules back to your HT Access file. To reset your permalinks, you essentially just select a different setting and save. Then put your settings back and save again. Keep in mind you may have to clear your browser cache before testing. The next thing to check is your HT Access file. This is a hidden file that handles rewrites and redirects. Keep in mind that WordPress relies on HT Access rules, so adding rules directly to it can cause issues. You may be thinking to yourself that you never made any changes to the HT Access file, but remember that plugins can add rules or make changes to the file. The easiest way to test an HT Access file is to rename it. Locate the HT Access file in the document root of your site and rename it. For example, add a dot old to the end of it. This will disable all HT access rules so you can test your site again. If the problems stop happening, then you know a rule in the HT access file is causing the problem with your site. Also, keep in mind if there's an HT access file in a parent folder, rules can be inherited so it can be helpful to search your account for HT Access files. Whenever you're done testing, you can simply rename the file back to HT Access to re-enable it. Finally, we're going to discuss exhausted memory or memory limit errors. Maybe this is what is displayed after enabling debugging. A good way to view your current settings is to use a PHP info page. To create a PHP info page, just create a file with any name such as phpinfo.php. Add this line of code to it and save. Then visit the file in your browser and you'll see information about your current PHP environment. It can also help to search the page for a specific setting such as memory underscore limit. And now that you know the settings, you can change them as needed. You can do this by editing the php.ini file and increasing the assigned number. In this example, I'm increasing the PHP memory underscore limit to 1024 megabytes. Be sure to save the PHP INI file when you're done and then you can always verify the changes made by refreshing the PHP info page. Notice it has been successfully increased to 1024 megabytes. Recent versions of cPanel also include a tool called the Multi PHP INI Editor, where you can easily adjust the PHP settings as well. 
Here's a demonstration of the tool. If your cPanel includes this and it allows you to modify the setting you need to change, I recommend using it instead of manually editing the PHP INI file. And also keep in mind that there's plugins available for viewing your PHP settings as well. In this example, I'm using Updraft Plus to view my PHP information. but I'll still have to make changes in the php.ini file. If you have any questions, you could submit them through the Q&A feature, send me an email, or find me after the presentation. This brings us to the end of our presentation on WordPress troubleshooting. Thank you for joining me and I hope it'll help next time you run into problems with your WordPress website. And thanks again to the WP Campus team for putting this online conference together.